Now, the, each of the two projects that the council endorsed was subject to a negotiation with myself, Mr. Coates, and Western Power in the uh, coming months as we look to shore those up and then bring the proposal back to council. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, as I said, we've got uh, a number of motions. Are there any other questions before we move to the next part? One question, thank you. Come down, state your name, suburb. Oh, no, that's good, well, Ash. The, uh, the Whiteman Regional Open Space, when is it going to happen and how often are you that that's going to be delivered on time? Uh, it's something the city's been advocating for at least the last decade. We are subservient to the state government. Uh, we have always proposed that the uh, Whiteman Regional Open Space uh, run parallel to the Marshall Road. Uh, the new train line might affect that. We're still waiting to hear back from the Department of Sport and Rec onto the location of that um, land that could be uh, ceded to the city. So I can't give you a time frame, unfortunately, Dale, um, because, but I will meet you with the Minister for Planning, who's also the local minister for that area in March, and we'll be uh, once again maybe an ad at top priority list to speak about the white and regional open space. So in the back of that, that main solid, solidified its delivery, are you looking at any other open sporting spaces in the um, CS1 in the near future? I think if you watch the video tonight, is a 20 plus million dollar um, sporting uh, complex being built in Dayton uh, in the next year or so. Yeah, that is. Isn't that the white one in Dayton? No, completely, completely different um, projects. Thank you. Um, we're now going to move on to item 4.2, motions from electors. Uh, electors of the city are entitled to move motions and vote on motions. An elector is a person who is eligible to be enrolled to vote in the elections uh, for the city of Swan. This includes rate payers. A mover and seconder for each motion is required to state the full name and address uh, when moving the motion. Uh, the following motions have been received. Now, I'm conscious that we've got 18 um, formal motions in writing. Um, if and what, how I plan to, to deal with those is I'll uh, ask the move to come out once it's been seconded. I'll ask if there's anyone against. If there's no one against, then it will be carried. If there's someone against who wants to speak against the motion, then the mover and the seconder have up to three minutes to speak to the motion. Anyone speaking against also has three minutes, and then there's a reply and reply by the mover. Uh, but as you can see, if we've already got um, 18 motions, if uh, everyone wants to speak, we'll be here till uh, very late this evening. So I now call on the uh, first um, person, and these are in the order that they were received by the city. It's Mr. Patrick Gerwin of Woodbridge who has five motions. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My first motion, that the whole of the Greater Midland Area Traffic Planning by MRWA and Transperth be obtained by and made available to council and the public. The rest of the motion is an ex that, that is the motion. The words after that are my explanation. Uh, thank you. Do I have a seconder? Mr. Simon Ashby. Is there anyone against? Being no one against, I'll clear that motion to carry. Thank you. Do you second the uh, motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Second motion. I move that council must advocate for community, i.e., residents and ratepayers, in active consultation with state government on behalf of the community to stop an in any massive increase in traffic in Midland. 
Thank you. I'll ask for a second there. Yes, you can state your name, please. Dr. Robert Lipchick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll ask, is there anyone against? You're against? You wish to debate it? Thank you. Uh, there was a person against, but they're happy not to debate it. Uh, I'll now put it to the vote. Do you have a red or a green card that was issued on the way in if you wish to exercise that right? You can vote, you don't have to. All those in favour of the motion, you hold your green cards up. Thank you, and those against. Uh, the motion is carried. My count was uh, 35 for and 24 against. Well, that's what I like. Okay. Okay, we'll get uh, some official orders in. For those people in favour, hold your green cards up until they've been counted. Thank you. In favour. Thank you, those against. is passed. Thank you, Mr. Irwin. Your third motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My third motion. I move that Council complete the moral review as Council unanimously committed. Uh, thank you. I'll ask if there's any. Uh, so first of all, I need a seconder. Uh, Christine Quinn, is there anyone against? You wish to debate it? Well, I want to know if you wish to debate or what I'm going to put it to the um, vote. Thank you. Those in favour of the motion, would you please hold your green cards up. Those against? The motion is lost. We go to number four, if you do it. 21 to 36. My fourth motion. I move that Council investigate developing heritage precincts to support the draft heritage planning policy. Do you wish me to speak to that to explain it? Uh, if you can just read the rest of that paragraph. Oh, the explanation is that 
uh, council to investigate heritage precincts, areas or places to be defined and developed for significant areas such as Midland Place, Old Town Centre, Morrison Road West, North Midland, Woodbridge, North and South, including possibly Ford Bailey and Harper Streets, and, and such places as the Spring Park Estate, which was the original Hammersley Farm, and, and the, uh, which became, uh, yeah, was actually the largest dairy farm in Western Australia and maybe the oldest agricultural land in the state. Um, and um, yeah, in respect, I've got the comment that in respect to uh, Harper Street, um, which linked uh, Harper Street and Ford Street linked Woodbridge Estate to Hamsley Farm. These streets may, uh, this uh, be, these streets may contain places uh, that are prior to were built prior to the eighteen ninety one subdivision, and by the way included Spring Park Estate where the camel trains used to drink uh, before leaving for the goldfields, which is on Harper Street. Thank you. We'll have Senator. Only Quinn. Is there anyone against? You wish to debate it? Thank you. Those in favour with motion four, please raise your green card. Those against, please raise your red card. The motion is carried, and you will read your fifth and final motion. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Right. Uh, this motion is uh, I move the removal of the proposed amendment number 13 to the draft heritage planning policy. And I think I'll have to explain this uh, because it won't mean anything otherwise. Um, I move this amendment is not adopted and that the words under nine. Heritage Advisory Group, shown deleted under Amendment 13, are reinstated. The words to be reinstated are <coughs> nominated by the National Trust and or the Heritage Council of Western Australia, a, pers have, a person having experience or expertise to the conservation or adaptation of places of cultural heritage significance and a person representing the community within a conservation precinct. That's the end of the quote. The reason for this uh, reinstatement is that the amendment as proposed appears to possibly give precedence to persons who are members of a historical society but may not have experience and expertise in the conservation and adaptation of places of cultural heritage significance over whom they would have precedence under the wording of this Amendment 13. Thank you. Do I have a second that? Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Is there anyone against? Do you wish to debate it? I've got a second in, in hearing. I'm asking if there's anyone against, which we've done for the last four motions. Do you wish to debate it? Uh, yes. Thank you. You have three minutes to commence your debate, Mr. Irwin. Well, my reasons are that in the matters of heritage evaluation and assessment, 
there is need for judgment and expertise. And if a person has no other qualification other than that he or she is a member of a historical society, it should not give them precedence over people who may be members of other associations or societies who do have professional expertise and are qualified heritage uh, uh, consultants. So it's simply a matter of letting the original draft stand, reinstating the original draft, which on this matter appeared to me to be much clearer and simpler. And uh, in reinstating it, you make it quite clear that you're giving precedence to people who are qualified to give advice on these matters. Thank you. Thank you. As a seconder, would you like to um, speak to the motion with me? Yes. Um, well, well, if you want to speak, can you please come down to the microphone? Come, on, yeah, come down to the microphone so everyone at the back can hear as well. Thank you. Um, having participated in the uh, consultations undertaken by the City of Swan staff on this matter, uh, we were, um, I represent Woodbridge Road Players Association, and we were quite keen to see that at some point community is incorporated in some of the advisory roles. However, in the final draft, what happened is, in discussions with City of Swan staff, they thought they, one, would remove the only point of which we can get some expertise from heritage advisors. Now, planning officers, council staff, myself as past historical president, working with the trust, working with developers, we are not heritage advisors. We don't have that expertise. Anyone in planning will agree they are not heritage advisors. So if you have a whole process, a draft, heritage policy document that really requires um, access to that expertise and you remove it from your advisory committee and you've removed it from everywhere else, you're going to miss out on something that is actually state obligation. This, this is a state obligation. So we cannot ask a historical society person to comment on. We cannot ask a planning officer to comment on. So therefore, it's essential that we go back to, that's the reason why it was put in there. Because when it's needed, they can rely upon it being independent. That it is actually expertise across the field, because um, something at Guildford is quite different to something at Bellevue or Sporting Valley. So we, want, we need this, and it shouldn't be, it's not at our cost, it's a state government requirement. So if we can have appropriate, responsible decisions made, I know that many developers would rather be able to have to know and the planning staff because yeah, they're, putting, minute, that they're putting the injurious decision of what well, is heritage, what's required. You have someone who's independent who says this is, you know, this is the advice, this is the you know information in regard to that particular heritage, be it from many aspects of heritage. We need professional expertise in there. Okay? And so that's why I said we really need it. Please. Thank you. Uh, people against the motion. Okay, any other speakers for or against? Uh, no speakers against, Mr. Irwin, you don't have the right to reply. So um, I'll put it to the vote. Those in favour of the motion, please hold up your cards.
Those against, please hold up your red cards. Uh, thank you. The motion is passed. Uh, 54, not be against. Thank you, Mr. Irwin. It takes care of your five motions. I'll now call on the next uh, move of motions. Uh, Anne Winchester from the Upper School and District Great Bays and Residents Association. Thank you, Anne. Just be careful coming down the steps. Thank you, and you've got two motions, I believe. You can just read them out. And my name is Kerry Rowe. I am the seconder of the motion. Um, when the paperwork was sent into the City of Swan, a mistake has been made. It should be my name, not Anne. Okay, so Kerry Rowe, you're moving the motions, yes. and once you've moved them, I'll call for a seconder for me. Thank you. That contact details of the operations quarrying money manager be displayed on the front gates of all extraction sites within the City of Swan, especially in the Upper Swan area and its surrounds. Thank you. I'll call for a seconder. Yes, if you just call out your name. Thank you, Anne. A second by Anne Winchester, I'll ask, is there anyone against? Being no one against, so it's clear that carried. If you can go on to your second motion, thank you. That a continuous dust and wind monitoring system be installed within extraction sites where those extraction sites are less than the buffer is requirement under guidance statement number three. Thank you, and I'll call for a seconder. And again, thank you. And I'll ask again, is there anyone against? Being known against, we'll clear those two items carried. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the next one, I have uh, Ms. Francesca Irwin, who has four motions. Thank you. When you're ready, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Francesca Rowe, do you want more I address? Uh, so it's got more reach. Yeah. Um, number one, I move that the City of Swan apply for Lottery West funding to create history walks, history walk plants for Midland. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Claire Scanlon. I'll ask, is there anyone against? Being no one against, I'd clear that carried. Thank you, on to your next motion. Thank you. I move that all the new plantings of trees, that are, all the new plantings of trees are to be watered in the first two years, and that the City of Swan is to supply council with an annual report advising how many trees they have planted and how many have survived. This same report is to be made available to the public. Uh, thank you. I'll just have a question to clarify that motion. Thanks, Fran. You're talking about uh, trees planted on either council verges or parks, not the trees, uh, up to 45,000 trees that the city's going to give out to residents this year. Under the city of Swan's responsibility, which would be the ones that you plant. Okay, we'll just see some of the plan. Oh, all new planting are city swan trees. Thank you. I just want to clarify oh, that yeah. before we put it to the vote. Sure. Uh, do I have a second? Yeah. Thank you. Your name? Sorry. The second is Anna Noble. And I'll ask, is there anyone against? Being no one against, I'll declare that carry. Number three. Thank you. 
um, I move that each motion carried at this AEM shall be considered by the City of Swan Council as a separate item, not just noted and considered or dismissed on block. Thank you. You have a second Your name, please. Second by Leah Borden. I'll ask if there's anyone against. Being no one against, I'll declare that carried. And on to your last one, thank you. Um, I move that the City of Swan <coughs> approach Development WA, brackets formerly the Metropolitan Regional Authority, close brackets, to reclaim Lot 1 and 7 Great Eastern Highway, known as Tui Gardens at Midland, and return the gardens to their original status as public open space. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? And um, Amy Quinn. <coughs> And I'll ask, is there anyone against? There is, do you wish to vote it? Thank you. Then you've got three minutes to open your debate. Thank you, my friend. Okay. Um, well, I'm repeating this motion. I've said it um, two or three times. Um, so let me explain. Tui Gardens, Lot 1 to 7 Great Eastern Highway, was originally gifted to the people of Midland in the 1930s as a parkland. Folk will tell you of another time when walking through these gardens was a refreshing delight, part of the charm of stepping through historic areas to new areas. There was a historic park that's actually been removed, referencing the railway line that travelled along the parkland, actually there were also some remnant railway lines found there until recently they were removed in 221, but before 221 there was a remnant rail lines as well. Now, reminding you that many years ago, the City of Swan relinquished Tui Gardens to the then Midland Redevelopment Authority. At that time, the gifting condition was clearly confirmed as green public open space. Now, since then, the site has languished. If you had the misfortune to look at it as you drive through the centre of Midland, you would have seen weeds growing rampant, the space stinks of disinterest, and neglect for the last 20 years. And this is all at the same time that the people in Midland have a distinctive lack of green walkways or green spaces. It's an important entry statement for Midland. It's something you can't miss as you drive through the middle of Midland. It wasn't the councils to give away, it was gifted by the people to the people of Midland as a park. Now, I've noticed in the feedback on the last year's AEM, on the comments, that I've only, I've only seen them for the first time. So it's made reference to the fact that, if you look at the AEM notes, that the uh, update is that, um, um, that, um, that the restoration of Chewy Gardens is not feasible because it's, uh, a contract is in progress. That's the response I've just read. Yeah, um, one minute with so that's not a response, that means nothing, that tells us nothing, it says nothing, it's a non-answer. So although you might say, why does your motions go again when we're telling you it's under discussion for contract? Well, my motion stands, because if there is a contract in motion, I didn't know about it, and neither did anybody else, and that uh, the city of Swan, if it is in contract, if there is a contract underway with development WA, the city of Swan should be ensuring that public open space is a covenant on our sale, and I'm sure they're not. Um, I don't have, I haven't raised it as a motion because they only just saw that feedback on the last year's AEM. But I shouldn't be having to make this uh, resolution every year on year on year on year, but something that's been given to the public every year, I'm ask, asking the same question, make sure it's public open space and we're not getting any response from the council other than you know, the sort of response you see on last year's AEM comments. Thank you, that's your three minutes. As the second Amy, do you wish to comment? Yes or no? Thank you. Speaker against? You come to the microphone. Thank you. You have three minutes also. Next speaker is Kevin Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be brief. The problem with this motion is that it should read that the Council confirmed with the United WA that two yards has in fact been sold. <coughs> Uh, 
Thank you. Um, are there any other speakers for or against the motion? Thank you. If you want to speak, please come down to the microphone. development of Midland has started to create a restaurant here. Some of you may have gone to the pizza place Basilico and uh, a range of small restaurants that are down through there. Uh, on the Great Eastern of Northern Highway you have um, a range of small businesses that operate there. Right near those, that area is the historic precinct where the local town hall is, an amazing building with our town clock. So, the question I have is a boarded up area that has been repeatedly questioned and asked, was gifted to the city, which has been repeatedly questioned and asked by residents over the years, this land belonged to the public and it is public open space. So how can it be boarded up? How can it be sold? We would like it back so we, it fits in well with that area because the restaurants can use it, it's beautification, it's adding amenity, and it's restoring that historic precinct right near the major town hall as you drive in on the left hand side, which is currently boarded up. So I support this motion. Right? I support the fact that our council represents our community. I know that Tui Garden has a long history, okay, having my grandfather being the oldest man in Midland at 104. I know Tui Garden is quite a significant place and I think that I would like to see our council identify has this land been sold, but it hasn't been sold. It should be gifted back to us because Midland Development Authority, when I moved down here, was going to yeah, one create one amenity. It was going to allow me safety, freedom, and to enjoy the history and heritage natural and built in which I walk and live. So I support this motion. And I also would like to say one last thing. Thank you very much to the staff of the City of Swan and the new CEO, who basically has given us what is the status of the questions that we raised from last year. Fantastic, and I'm excited. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Any other speakers for or against the motion? You wish to exercise your right reply, Fran? You have three minutes to do so. Just a question. Um, a member of the public, and not a representative of the council or in any position of authority, has advised us that the uh, property has been sold. Now, uh, now somebody's saying that's correct, uh, as in our CEO. So, can you, before I make any closing comments, can you actually update us? Because it, that, that didn't turn up on your response to my ADM motion from last year. Well, maybe it hadn't been sold at that point in time. I'll have to defer to the CEO. That was only two days ago. That I was, I'll have to. Thank you, Mr. I'm unaware of the situation, so I'll defer to you, Mr. CEO. Mr. Thank Andrew. you. I, I've answered the question. That's not a good enough answer. What we need to know, what does that mean? Because as a land gifted to the people, the public open space issue should be part of those conditions. So where are we up to? As you quite rightly noted earlier on, that the land was transferred and the redevelopment authority developed the WA as the current agency dealing with that. The land would have asked the questions under contract of sale for a mixed use development that would also include uh, low uh, uh, housing options for a variety of social outcomes. It's been solved. You haven't answered the question. Sorry, Mr. Senior, I'm still not clear. 
as to how the conditions would not include an aspect of public open space, proactive and interaction from yourself as a senior swan. I know you've solved it, but MRA, sorry, MRA solved it to the West. So can you do anything about that, Mr. CEO? So um, that's surprising. That's disappointing. Yes, but when, the, when it was raised, and when it has been repeatedly raised as being a public open space gifted to the people of Midland, repeatedly asked. You moved your motion. Okay, we'll keep the motion then. Well, uh, I've asked you, did you want to? Right right I just needed question. to know, yeah, but obviously I needed to know the status because we don't get the status. So it's a very disappointing status, isn't it? Apparently it's been passed on without our knowledge and there's no no allowance for any public open space, it's all going to be developed. I'll, so I'll ask you to start your right of reply thinking. So that is my right of reply. So I think that what we still need to do is we need to pass this motion to uh, show faith in our original expectation as it being gifted to the people of Midland for public open space. So that when we do that, it means it has to go back to council, it gets onto the agenda, it has to be debated by the councillors one way or the other. It means it doesn't go away. If we don't support this motion now, it means we can just need to roll over and let that situation go, which is very disappointing and it's a precedent we do not want to set. Thank you. I'll now put the motion. Those in favour of it, please raise your green cards. Uh, those against, can you please raise your green and uh, red cards? Okay, the motion is carried 52 to 29. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to call the next person to the open microphone. It's Claire Scanlon of Guildford. Um, I think there's three got the points, Claire, so we'll take it as three separate motions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening to yourself, councillors and staff. Lovely to see you all again. So um, you're quite correct, I do have three motions, thank you, Mr Mayor. So my first motion is that council support the construction of a safe pedestrian crossing on James Street near Atfield and Guildford to enable access to East Guildford train station and local schools. Thank you, do I have a seconder? Uh, Lynn Do I have anyone against? Being no one against, I'll clear that carried. Your second motion? 
Thank you, and I'd just like to propose that you asking everybody to consider that we've just um, had the loss of Tui Gardens, there's more public open space that we will not ever regain, and I'd just like everyone to consider that when they hear my motions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My motion is that no more new roads to be built across the Midland Oval Precinct and provide for more public open space in the mall. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Christine Quinn. Is there anyone against? You wish to debate it? Thank you. Um, there's opposition. You wish to debate it. Claire, so you'll have uh, three minutes to open your debate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll speak to you, motion. So, the current plan leaves the public open space marooned in a desert of construction yet for years to come. But by increasing the public open space, it will create a beautiful entry statement from the valley, from the hills, into Midland. With our level of infill continuing to rise to meet our growing community needs, we need to respond by providing the appropriate amount of public open space. The people who know Midland best, us, the residents, have told us clearly what that what the council is suggesting is not enough. <coughs> we can change this. I know many people believe that the community will be never happy with a redevelopment in Midland Oval, but I strongly disagree. It's simply not true. We support quality development with public open space for the community. <coughs> When the City of Swan moved all the sports and leisure activities away from the centre of Midland, something died in the heart of Midland, and that is evident from anyone passing through. Community space and events can bring that back, and we can enable the community of Midland the opportunity to thrive. As it currently sits, the public open space, Weird Park, is simply not large enough to host large community events. It's a simple truth. This redevelopment can be an entirely successful one, and this is one way we can work with the community to make it happen. Please, work with us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, as the second to Christine. Do you want to um, speak to her? Thank you. Uh, speaker against the motion. Yeah, three minutes, thank you. I uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll try and be brief. As recently as December, Council endorsed the existing master plan with the open space as dictated. We have seen events on Wheat Park in recent months with several thousand people in attendance. So very clearly, Wheat Park and I want to remind Council and the people present, we have an award for planning prior to it even being built. <laughs> Maybe you should go and visit. Mr. Mayor, it's the responsibility of this Council to drive confidence in the City of Swan. And the motion moved and carried by Council in December drives the confidence for people who invest in Midland. The reputation of the city swan has been consistently damaged in Midland as a place to come live and invest. We now have interest in Midland. Midland is an exciting and can be a very exciting, thriving CBD. But we can't. I didn't interrupt anyone else to speak. I don't expect to be interrupted, Mr. Mitt. It's time now for Midland to put a stamp on, on the. I rest my case. Um, put a stamp on the Western Australian economy as a major regional centre. The confidence in Midland to invest has always been there. The problem is people don't want to mess around and get held up by petty local government politics. Mr Mayor, this project we all know, we are all confident, generations of councils and councillors have supported the project over the years. We need to take that into account because they represented an awful lot of people. Thank you, Mr. Yay! Now the speakers, and I'll ask you for your right of reply, Councillor Clare. And um, 
before I ask if there's any more speakers. Okay. Any other speakers at all? Thank you. We come to the podium today for name. You have three minutes. Craig Holt, I come from Hallsbrook. I think the first point to make is that tonight, the re first comment made with this motion was you've just lost Chewy Gardens. I'm sorry, that was lost when it went to the other authority many, many years ago. Hasn't been lost tonight. The second point to make is that I have sat and watched council meeting after council meeting argue and debate this more. Let's just get it done. Move on, let's get some action in Midland so that somewhere that I can bring my family have a meal instead of having to go to June Bug for some place. Any other speakers for or against the motion? Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll leave you here. I'm going to call your name. If you come down, state your name and your suburb, and you'll have three minutes. Just as a response, uh, just to say that let's just get it done is not really a good answer. If we're going to put something there, it needs to be good and it needs to be appropriate and it needs to support what the city and the people want and not just say we had enough of fighting everyone, so let's just put something there. Thank you, Speaker. Against the motion. Speaker for the motion. Uh, gentleman at the back first, we can state your name and your suburb. Dr. Robert Ilchik, uh, I'm from South Guildford. Um, my wife accuses me of being hyperbolic when I speak sometimes, so I'll try and tone it down a little bit. I think I appreciate the gentleman's comments about wanting to be able to do something in Midland. I think anyone in that area would love to do something in Midland. But, and here's my lack of hyperbole, I would put Midland in as one of the 10 ugliest cities in this country. That's right. Let's change it. But let's do something with some vision to it, not trying to restir an old pot. The reason Midland is broken is transportation is broken in that community. You can't get from A to B because nothing goes from A to B. You have to go to C, D, and E before you can get to B. So if you really want to solve an issue here, Mr. Mayor and Mr. CEO, what Midland needs is to open up its main transportation corridor, which is the not-so-great Eastern Highway. Sorry to interrupt you, Robert, but the motion is talked about. That's public open space on the mall, not traffic issues, if I could ask you to keep your comments to the motion before us. Yeah, yes. Yeah, on, yes. on the mall, not traffic in general throughout Midland Agency. Thank you. Let's just make Great Eastern Highway great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other speakers against? Gentlemen up the back, Mr. Gangel, please. You have three minutes if you need them. Oh, good evening, John Gangel. I actually live in Midland. I find it very insulting that people uh, would take uh, jokes and pot shots at Midland. Midland's a fantastic area, a wonderful area. Uh, I've invested in Midland, I have great faith uh, in Midland. There is some wonderful uh, open space. In fact, I live in the heart of Midland, uh, overlooking Juniper Gardens. They are fantastic uh, locations. Wonderful to have that uh, that uh, atmosphere within my own surrounds. And talking about being able to get uh, from A to B or wherever you want to get to, let me tell you, Midland is one of the easiest places to transport around. I don't use a car. I use public transport because everything comes into Midland. Uh, I think this is fantastic for Midland. I think a lot of effort, a lot of work, a lot of time. And I have to say there are, of course, uh, other elements that uh, can happen along the way. Now, Councillor Aaron Bowman recommended a green uh, piazza potentially be put in place uh, as we move forward. 
uh, with the redevelopment of Midland. But Midland's a fantastic place, and quite frankly, I'm sick of people running it down, and it's a wonderful place to live and invest. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Speaker for the motion. This is early first. Thank you. Can we just get back on track? This motion is only about requesting no more new roads over Midland Oval. It's not about I love Midland, it's not about Midlands and Fs, and it's not about people telling us in Midland what people in other wards think should happen to Midland particularly. It is about no more roads over Midland. Why? Because if when we get our development, well, I can't wait for that oval to be developed. Get on with it. But when you develop it, it needs to be somewhere where people want to go. Hey, if you have at least three more roads suggested to go across the oval, with not any necessary appending roundabouts or lights on either side of those roads to enable the traffic to get anywhere once it's got onto that road, okay? Major blockage, we all know about the problem of transport in Midland, that's another. So the point is, if you put more roads on the oval, it's no longer an appetizing, pleasant, delightful place. It lacks the ambience because there are cars whizzing past you. Now, if you look at any great central park in any of the other parks in suburban areas, you do not find the roads going right through the middle of them. Very simple. She's from uh, Claire Scan and has another motion to put up. Let's get on to that, just as important. This one is no more roads through the oval. Okay. <coughs> Speaker against the motion. Another speaker for the motion. Any other speakers for or against? Then you have three minutes for summarising. Thank you. Thank you. We'll put it to the vote. Those in favour of the motion, please raise your green cards. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Those against, you can please raise your green cards. Motion is lost, 34 for and 40 against. Uh, your final motion, thank you, Claire. Thank you, Mr Mayor. My final motion is to retain Midland Oval to the extent of what remains of the historic cycle track at Midland Central Park. Thank you to our seconder, um, Patrick Irwin. Is there anyone against? Do you wish to debate it? Thank you. Uh, there is some against, but they don't wish to debate it, so I'm going to put it to the vote. Those in favour of the motion, please raise your green card. Those against, please raise your red
The motion is lost. There were 26 votes for and 35 against. Thank you. That now takes us to uh, Mr. Gordon Duttry of Beachborough. Is Gordon here? Thank you. Then you can go to the um, podium and move your motion to one at a time. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Gordon Duttry of Beachborough. Um, I move uh, the council to move for more, uh, plant more merry trees. Uh, Grumbia Calphillion. On the city owned land, including the reserves and parks. Uh, the city to conduct a survey and map all married trees with a diameter of greater than 30 centimetres. Thank you. I might just get you to stop there. I might have to do these dot points um, individually. So on item one, the council moves to plant more married trees on the city uh, reserves and parks and land. Do I have a second, Christine Quinn? Is there anyone against? Being no one against, I declare that motion carried. Can you read your second one, thanks, Gordon? Thank you. Um, proceed to conduct a survey and map all merry trees with a diameter of greater than 30 centimetres. Thank you, Lord Senator. Amy Quinn. And once again, I'll ask is there anyone against? You wish to debate it? Thank you. Uh, then I'll have to put it to the vote. Uh, those in favour, please raise your green cards. I just ask if you're holding up a card, either red or green, that you hold it up so it makes it easier for the um, people to count. Those against? Thank you. The motion is carried 33 to 21. The next one, thanks, Gordon. Okay, I move for the City Council to add frontalities to the public for any submissions for the removal of any married trees with a diameter of greater than 30 centimetres. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Claire Scanlon. Is there anyone against? Well, you'd have to refer that question to the person moving the motion. I'll explain uh, at the end of this, but basically, um, the removal of old married trees on verges, reserves, uh, land council owns private land. Um, we're losing the road and So um, I wanted um, the public to know um, for any submissions from developers, etc., they want to remove these trees because they are not. So it's for that question. The whole range. It's about education as well. Uh, how we look. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't agree. Are you ready? No. Yeah. Okay, we're not, we're not going to debate it. Um, so I just want to clarify, Gordon. Yeah. Uh, in the first motion, you mentioned Maori trees and you mentioned Karindia Calafly. Um, 
I mean, the next ones are just Maori trees, or where there's a number of different species of uh, Maori trees, you just talk about the gum nut trees. Yeah. Uh, so only the, one, only the one mentioned in the first line. That's correct. Thank you. Okay, item three, City of Swan advertises the public for any submissions for the removal of Maori trees from the Dirt Hammond up greater than 30 centimetres. Is there anything against? Being no one against, I'll clear that carrot. If you get on to your fourth one, please. Can I move that the council map corridors of old growth Maori groves that are used for retail black box tubes? That's the uh, Axi Naso and the Echoditis, which is a new subspecies discovered in 2020. Now on the Commonwealth uh, Environmental Protection and Biodiversity um, Act, uh, 2013 a as well as the urban foliage uh, canopy that cannot be replaced and is urgently needed, uh, and we all know about environmental and climate changes around the place. So these old growth um, marries are, are, um, are groves of old trees that are left through um, private and um, residential and on uh, council land. Thank you. I'll ask for the uh, second one. Your name, please. And I'll ask, is there anyone against? Being no one against, I'll clear that carry. We'll be on to the next one, thanks, Lord. Okay, I move to the council to come up with a policy to encourage private landowners on the importance of this iconic indigenous West Australian tree. Uh, the way to preserve them. Thank you, Lord Senator. Same uh, to Neil Dutra. And I'll ask again, is there anyone against this? Being no one against, I'll clear that uh, carried. If you can move on to your next one, thanks, Lord. If I can move for the council to encourage the now closed John Septimus Primary School in Beachborough to keep a grove of old growth Maori trees that the school itself have preserved for the last 30 years as its remnants of Maori woodlands and part of a corridor of Maori trees for the young retail black hawk to its origin for food. Thank you, Senator. Amy uh, Quinn. Second of Christine Hughes. Is there anyone against? Being no one against, I'll clear that carry. We'll be on your next one, thanks, Lord. Okay, so I move for the Swan Council to install informative signage in all the parks and reserves with information illustrating local Indigenous flora and fauna. So their residents are educated in the preservation of the West Australian protected species and unique biodiversity on our doorsteps. Thank you, Senator. Thanks, uh, Lynn Deering. Is there anyone against? Being no one against, I'll see that carried. And thank you for your um, item to present tonight. Next motion of Gary Whitner from Alcool. Okay, so I'd um, just like to put a motion to Council to provide a suitable home ground oval for the newly formed Ellenbrook Easterns T-Ball and Softball Club within the municipality of Ellenbrook, preferably Coolamon Oval. The oval, oval would be required as follows. Summer season, October to March, T-Ball games played on Sunday morning, 8 through to 1 p.m. And in the winter season, which runs from April to September, Softball games again played on a Sunday, either at 11, 1 or 3 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. I have a seconder. Sorry, just call out, you know. Sorry? 
Sarah Hewitt. Thank you, Sarah. I'll ask if there's anyone against. Being no one against, I'll declare that carried. And thank you, Gary. Thank you. Uh, next person to move the motion is Mr. Simon Ashby of Woodbridge. Thank you, Simon. Simon Ashby of Woodbridge. My motion is that Council, with the community, review projects that impact Midlands community, traffic, schools, green space, and lobbies other parties to provide information on the proposed projects so that the community and Council can assess the merits or otherwise. Thank you, Lark Seconder. Uh, we've got Lynn Deering. Is there anyone against? Being no one against, I'll declare that carried. Thank you, Simon. Uh, the next um, person who's indicated that I've got to move the motion is Mark Aguilar of Portsmouth. Mark here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, my motion is that the CS1 implement a 12 month season booking for the Ellenbrook United Football Club, that's the round booking, by the way, in lieu of the winter booking system uh, at the Ellenbrook Sports Hub in Abley. And just for clarification, that's the southern pavilion, not the northern pavilion. So on the southern pavilion. Thank you. Do I have a second that? Can you call your name out, please? Michelle Carl. Was your surname Carol? Yes, two hours and two minutes. Thank you. Second is Michelle Carroll. And I'll ask, is there anyone against? There's no one against, I'll declare that Carol. Oh, sorry, there is. You should debate it. Yeah. Okay, then I'll give you three minutes, um, Mark, to open your motion. Thank you. 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 Um, okay. Elmbrook United Football Club has been established for 15 years and has been at the Elmbrook Sports Hub since it was uh, constructed in September 2016. Elmbrook United Football Club is a non profit organisation with just over 600 members now, aging in from four years through seniors. Um, our season typically runs uh, like most council bookings, which are winter and summer season, much the Team and softball. Uh, the difference we have is we actually operate for 11 months of the, the year anyway. So, for us, uh, the main reason for this uh, motion is um, the amount of work that is created um, in our off season, which is pre season and post season. Um, every single booking that we have to make, which is some, yeah, it's, it's over 100 bookings, the full forms, everything will have to be filled in to council. Um, we're not after a reduction in fees, we're after we, we understand that the fees would increase because we're basically building out our um, booking system there, but it'll be just one booking instead of sometimes two main bookings. Um, it's, um, as far as the season goes, nobody else uses the pitches. The, it's a purpose-built, I call it soccer facility. Uh, it's exactly for that. Council has tried to run hockey on it, uh, other different sports, but because of the way it's constructed, because it sits on a slight angle. Um, during summer, during the day, you can't even walk on the field. So for us, we can't use it until about 6 pm, uh, even sometimes 7 pm in the recent week, uh, and in terms of cancel bookings as well. Um, when we have our football season uh, finishes the end of October, and in November, we run different programs, charity games. Uh, we have a massive NAIDOC week. Yeah, well, we live, thank you. So for, uh, it's, it's purely to save a lot of paperwork. It would save council a lot of paperwork as well. Council basically have somebody sat at that facility who looks after us, fills in paperwork with us. So um, that's really all it is. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Is the second of you like to add comment? Thank you. Speaker against the motion. You have come up, state your name and your suburb, and you have three minutes. Steve Rogers from Mabley. Um, nothing against you guys. Um, I'm happy to be the president of the Falcons Hockey Club. Um, we are kicked off every six months from our side. So basically, we try and we end up having to use uh, Guildford Turf uh, for summer hockey, which isn't the cheapest, uh, but they help us out. Um, for me, it's the precedent has been set. Most clubs are either struggling for facilities or actually only having facilities for six months. Summer hockey and, and um, seven-a-side hockey is getting bigger and bigger. Um, and that's all right during the summer. This precedence that one club has got such a massive facility and they only 12 months a year. Um, we can play hockey on that facility. Um, there's a new type of hockey that basically is like indoor hockey back outdoors. Um, and that facility is perfect for that. Um, and we can run a competition on there with no problem whatsoever. I fully support Elmbrook United. I think uh, they do an excellent job in Elmbrook. Uh, but we need to look at all the sporting clubs across the board, not just give um, basically 12 months of the facility when other clubs can't use it. So I apologise for saying the it. But um, we're all fighting for space um, and it just needs to be shared out. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what we're Thank you, Steve, for your point of view forward. I'll ask again, are there any other speakers for or against? You wish to speak? Or for? Or for? Or for? You please come down, you have three minutes. And you just state your name or something. Yeah, Gary Wackford from Elbrook. Uh, I thought there was a new development going down in Dayton for hockey, some 20 or 30 million dollars worth, so I'm not sure what the issue is for hockey right now. Thank you. The speaker against. Speaker against. Speaker for. You can come speak. Please come down. Thank you, yes, three minutes. As Mark said, we've been in the community for 15 years. We have over 600 members. We've never had an issue prior to this. Nobody's ever wanted to come and use the Ellenbrook space for a part of the season or off season prior to now. So to come in now and say, because we've got this subject and that, that they want this, this space, I think it's a bit ironic. And after all, we are supporting the community all year round, not just on a season, but off season as well. Thank you. I'll ask, are there any other speakers for or against? Sorry. There's no right of reply, unfortunately. Um, I'll ask if there's any other speakers for or against? Uh, you've got a right of reply as the move of the motion. If you wish it, Mark, you have about three minutes of the time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, so the, the hockey stadium, which is, um, I understand, is 50% larger than the, uh, the soccer stadium <coughs> at the moment. Um, uh, hockey has been tried on several occasions by council, um, but because of the camber, this is what I've been told by council, so I'm giving the second hand, the camber of the pitch, the ball doesn't roll straight. That's really it in a nutshell. Um, currently, council has advised me who has booked in our winter season and off season in the two years that I've been there. So anybody can jump online at the moment, book a pitch. No hockey has booked a pitch in the two years that I've been there. So put it on it, hasn't done it. Um, thank you. Thank you. I'm now going to put the motion. Uh, those in favour, please raise green cards.
Thank you. Those against, you can raise your red cards. Uh, the motion is carried 25 votes for, 16 against. Thank you. Uh, that takes us to the next item, and it's Lynn Deering from Woodbridge. Thank you, Lynn. that Council investigated research for proactive ways to address and engage owners who leave land and buildings idle, ways to ensure vacant and not utilised land is beautified by the green and regular maintenance is undertaken in land within the city of Midland. City is one to include options to incentivise and penalise and report back to Council within the eight months. This is around investigating and researching. So basically improving the heritage board. And so can I just clarify, um, you've got to undertake land within the city of Wood, you mean the city of Swan, or do you mean the suburb of Midland? Oh, well, I particularly focus on the suburb of Midland. City wide. Thank you. So only in the suburb of Midland. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I'll ask for a seconder. Uh, Mr. Simon Ashby. Is there anyone against the votes? No, sorry. Um, I'll ask once more is there anyone against? Being no one against, I'll tell you that, Carrie, you can go on with Did you have a second one? No, just the one. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, the next um, person who's written in is Anna Noble from Beachboro. Thank you, Anna. My name is Anna Noble from Beachboro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay, well, thank you. My name is Alan Noble. I live in Beachborough. I move that the council consider an upgrade to the pedestrian streetscape of Beachborough with a view to providing shade and beautification to the pavements and the council crossover areas of the site. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Easy, easy. For the second <laughs> Um, Mayor Borden, I'll ask, is there anyone against? You wish to debate it? You're against. And you, do you wish to? Well, I'm, I'm asking, do you want to debate it? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll ask then the second, do you wish to make a proposal? You move it to uh, open comments, and you have three minutes, thank you, Anna. If you wish to speak to your item. Well, I've lived in Peachborough for 33 years, and I've been asking the council for a little bit of an upgrade for 25 or 30 years. <laughs> Nothing's happened. Um, it's a scruffy area. There are streets when on a hot day. There's no shade, there's dead grass, there's a massive reflection from the pavement of road. And it's miserable in places. It's quite miserable and depressing. And it speaks of deprivation, sadness, and it shouldn't. It needs to be up. It's long overdue. Thank you. Is that all the comments you'd like to make? At the moment, yes. I didn't think it would be challenged. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
very briefly, um, beautification of many areas in Portrait. People have to enjoy the place where they live and visitors to the area need to enjoy it as well. If the Notioner has been asking for something to be done for the last 25 years, then I would say that time's up and something needs to be done very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Riggs. Thank you. You can state your name and suburb again. You have three minutes for your um, talk on this item. Chris Davis Woodbridge. I'm not against beautification, what I'm against is beautification using the wrong materials. The way that the motion has been put, it's three paragraphs of the motion rather than one paragraph with an explanation. So the second paragraph and third paragraph are both part of the motion. And the, the use of plane trees is wrong because it should be they should be using native trees rather than um, an introduced species. Plane trees are not a, a friendly tree. And the third paragraph, increasing paving is going to increase reflected heat rather than decrease it. And dirt, dirt isn't, isn't a, a nice, well, it's, it's a natural material, but at least it doesn't reflect as much heat. So I, I oppose the use of plane trees, but any others, fine, as long as they're native, and don't put in paving. You either got to use that grass or loose soil, but don't use paving. That's all. Uh, thank you, Chris. And I, I took it that uh, Anna's motion was just confined to the first paragraph, and the second two were the supporting uh, statements or the reasons. So you can confirm that that's correct, thank you, Anna. Okay, I'll ask if there's any more speakers for or against. Uh, speaking for or against. Thank you. Come down to the podium. Can I just ask one question? Are there any plane trees in Netherlands? Yes. I think you'll find these plane trees all the way down Beachbar uh, Road. There are lots of plane trees because they're very resistant to pollution. As well as being beautiful and offering a lot of shit. Thank you. You have a right reply. Um, Sir, you have the microphone for three minutes if you need it. Yeah, look, it's, it's, a, it's a great motion and it's intent. I don't think we should get wound up with the other two paragraphs, which it will go to council. The point is, if you vote for this, it will go to council. It will get recommendations from our officers to provide the appropriate advice about the best way to beautify the suburb. So we can't expect the proper planning design today in the motion. But the intent is the important thing. I agree, you have to get the right trees, etc. Absolutely. But right now, if we don't support the motion, then unfortunately, again, this suburb just languishes in, as we've seen, a desperately sad situation of neglect. So let's support it for now and trust the council and the councillors to come up with the best design to enable that design to suit from an environmental sustainable perspective. Thank you. Last, is there any other speakers for or against the motion? Being no other speakers, and you can have a right of reply if you wish to talk about any of the comments made um, for or against. At the moment, there's a lot of dead grass which suggests that the city don't really water much in each ground. So, it's paving a little bit and a little alternative for a lot of dead grass and soil. Okay. Now we're going to put the vote. Uh, those in favour, please raise your green tickets. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, thank you, I ask there's anyone against. I declare the motion carry. Thank you. Our next person is Bill Carroll from Indiana. Bill here. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Bill Carroll. Um, as a member of Rethink Eastlink, I would like to ask the City of Swan to remove Eastlink from the advocacy priorities list. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Patrick Irwin. I'll ask you, is there anyone against? You wish to debate it? Thank you. Uh, the person against that wish to um, make any comments, so I'll put it to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your green cards. Are those against the motion, please raise the red cards. Uh, the motion is lost, 20 votes in favour and 34 against. If you can read your next motion, please. Uh, I'd like to ask the City of Swan to appoint a dedicated environmental officer to oversee environmental issues in the city and also to ensure that the city adheres to its own Biodiversity strategy. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Uh, can you just read the gentleman back again, Dr. Okay. okay. Is there anyone against? Being no one against, I declare that carried. And thank you for your um, motions tonight. Um, I'll put in the third motion. Right. Well, I haven't got it, but seeing you at the microphone, I'll take it now rather than asking you to come back when I call from the floor. Okay. Uh, very similar to the last motion. I'd like the city to uh, instigate a significant tree register across the whole of the city this morning. Thank you. I'll ask your seconder. Uh, Mark Church. Thank you. I'll ask, is there anyone against? You wish to debate it? Thank you. And uh, Bill, you will have three minutes to make your comments on your third item. Thank you. Okay. Um, so just a significant tree register. I did a quick Google search and it took me less than a minute to come up with City of Joondalup, City of Fremantle, City of Canning, Town of Victoria Park, City of South Perth, City of Vincent, Mandra, Essendon, Bayswater, Serpentine, Jaredale. So I stopped there because um, that was the first page and I thought, well, there's no real need to continue on. Uh, significant tree registers, it's obvious that all the other LGAs across the Perth metro area see it as a priority. Um, we are, as I've heard tonight, we're losing a lot of our remnant vegetation. We have many, many, many trees in the city of Swan that are well worth preserving. 
Our trees are under pressure. Uh, our ecosystems are under pressure. And if we were to put in a significant tree register, that would at least give us a chance to see some of these trees survive into the future and to continue to do what they do. Our larger remnant vegetation trees, they're factories. They're not just trees that grow there. It takes a, uh, as we had the Carimbia caratella trees, the Murray trees, it takes them a minimum 80 years before they can form a, a hollow that is suitable for the black cockatoos to use. Each tree that's around 100 years old would have at least 100,000 living organisms in that tree. What we don't see is what's below the trees, all the microbes, all the fungi, everything that's under there, and they're the things that keep the trees healthy. It's not just sunlight and water. It's very, very important that we recognise some of these trees. There's a tree in Swanview that it's an old Jarrah tree that unfortunately they used to chain the Aboriginal convicts to. It's trees like that that we need to preserve. Yeah, all one minute left, thank you. Um, I've really said all I need to say, but I just think that everyone needs to. Oh, I'd also like to say that um, down at the Save Paulino wetlands, the trees there that were that are still under threat, all those eucalyptus rooters that were out of sight for so long because they're surrounded by industrial areas. That is a fantastic area. You cannot replace those trees. Each one of those trees is priceless, regardless of what anyone thinks. Now, I'd really like to see the City of Swan councillors and staff get an ecologist in here and come in and have a good talk to you and tell you, I, I'm not um, qualified enough to really go into this deeply, but I'm sure the city can afford to have someone come in and to give you an overview of the importance of these trees. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Is the seconder? Is the seconder? Thank you. Uh, speaker against the motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councils have been around a while. We know that we have uh, council have considered this item a number of times. Why I oppose this is not so much for the, uh, the ideology of it, but more about the practicality. How you possess trees over 1,059 square kilometres and what constitutes a significant tree in the Avon Valley in the back of Bullsbrook that is one that might be in Swanview. So for someone who lives in a rural environment, it's there, I fully support uh, environmental initiatives, but the practicality and lack of detail in this particular motion uh, can't be supported. What would possibly be a far more uh, appropriate to me or some incentive for any developers to retain what could be deemed a significant tree within the development as part of the approval of the fast track. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers for the motion? Uh, lady first. And I also uh, had the pleasure of sitting and listening to the debates about this uh, register and it was again on down on the details on can we afford it, can we decide it, can the idea is and the council's job is to give the idea. There are many people who are qualified and they will work out the details. We need to give the ideas and you cannot tell me now that the city does not have money. <laughs> Thank you. You can state your name and say it. My name is Tiffany. I'm from Bullsbrook. I own a small piece of acreage in Bullsbrook, and on my property, I have a number of trees. The problem I have with this motion is the fact that I don't want to get bogged down and get told that trees on my property are significant. When the motion doesn't actually tell us enough on what's, uh, what constitutes significance. Is it age of tree? Is it the number of breeding holes in the tree? Is it the size of the tree? All these things, uh, it's too vague on what a significant tree is. Now, I have a number of large married trees on my property. 
I also have horses. I don't want to get told that I can't put a horse in a paddock because it might impact a tree. So whilst I have no problems with the whole significant tree statement and, and, and conservation, what I do have a problem with this motion is that it is simply not detailed enough. And I don't want to get caught as a landowner, as, as a person who lives and loves and breathes. And I have bridal trail across the road from me and everything else, and I love my trees. I just don't want to get caught being told what I can do at this stage. Thank you. Um, to the board of motion, please come to the microphone. So it's fine. My name is Tanil Dutre. Um, I'm from not Brighton. <laughs> um, I support the, the motion. I agree with what you're saying. I think there needs to be some more, um, perhaps, clarification around what is a, a significant tree. I don't think that's our job as the general public, though, to decide that. There are people that are qualified that are, have the right to do that, but if we don't support the motion, nothing changes. So I agree. I think all the trees. Um, in this city, this one need to be protected, um, you know, or at least some sort of education. So I support the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Against the motion. Any other speakers for or against? Can you? Can I just say, we're talking about the register. We've over 35 councils, um, 80 of the state, without free registers. Thank you. Any other speakers for or against? You've got a reply if you want to kill. Thank you. You have up to three minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll apologise because I only put this motion in when I got here tonight and uh, I probably should have put on the City of Swan or Crown Land. So I apologise to um, landholders, although your trees are still very important. But um, okay, so the City of Swan falls in the part of the southwest of WA and we are in a biodiversity hotspot, internationally recognised. This means that we have a great diversity of plant, animals, microorganisms, species, many of which are found nowhere else on earth. So your canopy trees make up a huge part of that important hotspot biodiversity. Once lost, this unique biodiversity can never be replaced. I'm re actually reading these words from the City of Swan's uh, Biodiversity Strategy. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's your own document. And the first photo on that document is of the Carnaby's cockatoo sitting in a marry tree, Calafella, uh, Corimbia Calafella, sorry. Okay, so the natural environment of the city all, all also provides a valuable ecosystem and significant <coughs> cultural health aesthetic and recreation values for our community and the city. A lot of the trees, there are still scar trees in our community. These scar trees were, long, were here long before the colonisers came here. Those trees hold a huge significance for the local Noongar people. All of this is under significant threat as the Perth metropolitan area expands, making it critical to protect our unique natural environment. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen the documentary, The Black Cockatoo Crisis, I would urge you all, I think that it should be compulsory viewing for all our councillors and staff. It was made by Jane Hammond 
and it, it focuses greatly on what the Maoris produce. They're all about to blossom, and from those blossoms, we'll get the honking nuts, and in those honking nuts, we'll have the seeds. We'll have the Bordens, the Carnabies, and the Red Tails all coming in to see them. Two J Road will soon be a mass of white blossom. Once again, I would urge all councillors to possibly take a drive up in the next four to six weeks and have a look at the huge amount of blossom there will be along Two J Road. Some people mightn't be happy with what ends up in their gutters and all the honky nuts that fall all over the place. But believe me, the birds. But it's not just about the birds, it is about all the other marsupials and animals, insects, etc. Thanks very much. Thank you. And quick motion, those in favour, please raise your green cards. Thank you, those again, please raise your red cards. Can you raise them up so the uh, people can, you can see them easily, thank you. Thank you, the motion is carried 52 to 15. Um, that brings us Brings us to the next person, Lee Board on Woodbridge. Thank you, Lee. The city has reported, reportedly spent up to 70 million dollars on the Midland Oval Redevelopment Project. We know nine years of financial record reports have been prepared but have not been made public. As a council that states in its 2005-06 City of Swan annual report, financial report, it promotes an open and trusting environment. Ratepayers are entitled to rely upon that stated standard and to know how their money is being spent and to know the return on their investment. I move that the nine years of financial reports on the Midland Oval Redevelopment Project be released to great banks. Thank you, Dr. Second, please scan one. Well, the first hand I say go up is Claire Scanlon, so I'll put you down as the seconder. I'll ask, is there anyone against? Do you wish to debate it? Thank you. Do you wish to debate it? For those in favour of the motion, please raise your green cards. Uh, those against, please raise your red cards.
Uh, thank you. That motion is lost. 29 for the motion and 34 against. Thank you. Um, call the next person to the microphone, Robin Bloom from Valadura. Thank you, Robin. Hello, Robin Bloom from Yalajura. I'm lucky last, I'm more lucky. <laughs> um, my motion Kathy, is... Kathy, I'm just asking to stop for a second, Robin, uh, Robin Bloom, just a few people leaving the auditorium. Thank you, Robin, for the first step. Thank you. <laughs> My name's Robin Bloom from Balladura. Um, my motion is for the council to prepare a report in this calendar year that investigates a way forward for the long-term viability of revegetating and maintaining the fund on Hepburn Avenue between Alexander Drive and the Tonkin Highway in Balladura. The report to include, but not limited to, a timeline and start date of the program of works, soil treatment to ensure long-term planting success rates, the necessity of an extended watering program, and perhaps a friends group involvement. Thank you, do I have a seconder? If you could please state your name. Michelle Maynard, you're from... Thank you, Michelle, as a seconder. And I'll ask, is there anyone against? Being known again, so I'm clear that Carrie will thank you for thank your time. You. Okay, those were all the written uh, motions we received. However, we did have contact from Angela Charlesworth, but we didn't receive a motion from Angela. Is Angela here? I'll now call on you, Angela, to come forward. Have you got one or more motions? Thank you. Okay. Maybe you just read your motion, thank you. It's a bit of a long one. Sorry, I just went out. Um, the motion I'm presenting, as well as the petition. Oh, okay. The motion I'm presenting and a petition signed by 133 signatories for your consideration on behalf of residents affected by the construction of the Movida Estate Ground Noise Wall. The City of Swan issued planning approval for the construction of a noise wall between Movita Estate and the freight line as it runs through Stratton, Swanview and Midvale for the purpose of protecting the amenity of the new residents in the Movita Estate from the noise generated by the freight trains passing through the area. The City's planning approval failed to take into account any negative impact this wall would have on existing residents within the surrounding suburbs of Midvale, Stratton, Swanview and Jane Brook. In failing to act on behalf of all electors, the, city, the decision by the city to approve this wall has created a significant loss of amenity for pre-existing communities through the generation of increased noise and vibration from the train, freight trains and standard um, trains. It's not acceptable for any development to create a loss of amenity for pre-existing communities. Um, we therefore put the request that the, council, the City of Swan Council takes immediate action to ensure the appropriate, appropriate entity or entities immediately action to ensure that the satisfactory solution is implemented, um, which is satisfactory, satisfactory to the affected communities that returns the amenity of these communities to that which they experienced prior to the installation of this, the estate on this wall without delay. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Seconder. Right up the back there, we can call your name out in a loud voice, thank you. Mark. Yeah, Mark Majeski. The second of the motion is Mark Majeski. And your suburb of residence, thank you, Mark? Uh, Swanview. Swanview. Thank you. I'll ask, is there anyone against the motion? 
be known again so it's clear to carry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll now move to the uh, part where I'll take motions uh, from the floor if there's any. And the first indicator was Amy Quinn. Amy, if you could come forward and uh, state your motion. Thank you. From Perhaps I could just ask you to wait for a second while a few more people leave the auditorium. Thank you, Amy. If you could please proceed. Thank you. Just talk right to the microphone. Regarding the footbridge over Black Adam Creek connecting Midland to Bybush, my motion is that the city does not remove the existing footbridge structure over the creek um, and that the city repair or replace handrails on the existing footbridge instead for the following reasons. That the estimated cost will be over $200,000, which is a burden on ratepayers and I consider unnecessary, and it's repair. Uh, will cost significantly less. Number two, the bridge is located directly adjacent to breeding sites, significant breeding sites for, say, the kingfisher, the blue morale, and many other species, as well as the long winged tortoise. Um, so the, the bridge itself is directly adjacent to these trees with nesting hollows. I think it's um, wise to lose them. Number three, the bridge is a significant, um, a site of significant history for some locals being made from the <laughs> railway carriage, which is probably about 120 years old, and was placed over the bridge in the late 1970s, um, which I think is testimony to the resourcefulness and ingenuity of their own paper and is worth protecting. Additionally, the area um, is, a is a registered site under the Aboriginal Heritage Act, um, and which would actually complicate moving on in any case. So um, the motion is that we not remove that bridge, but simply repair it. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? I'll take uh, Mr. Irwin. I'll ask if there's anyone against. Being no one against, I'll clear the carry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that takes us to the point. Uh, I'll ask if there's any other uh, motions come from the floor. Take the lady Michelle Maynard first, thank you. Good evening, I'll make a quick second. Sorry, just before you start, sure. Michelle, can you just tell me how many motions you've three. Three, thank you. So, one time. Okay, um, my name is Michelle Maynard. I'm, I am from Balladura. The first uh, motion is I move the council resolve to continuously advocate the federal and state government for funding for the All Abilities Playground in Balladura. I the council has put money aside and it's been a uh, pass, please. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? State your name, please. Leanne Jeffries from Balladura. I'll ask if there's anyone against. Being no one against, let's clear that code. You can go on to your second one, thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Along a similar lines, I move the council resolve to continuously advocate for a funding from the federal and state government for the proposed pump, uh, pump track at Engine Park in Valjura. Pump track in Engine Park. I have a seconder. Once again, uh, Lee Jeffries. Is there anyone against? Being no one against, so clear that carrot. Your third one, please. Thank you. Lastly, I ask, uh, I move, ask council, I move that council resolve to investigate uh, possibly providing public access uh, through the fenced area in the swamp to allow close access uh, for the public to the wetland whilst protecting the existing flora, fauna, and the protected conservation area. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Uh, you... Hayden Miles. Thank you, Hayden. I'll ask, is there anyone against? 
being known and against when it's there that carried. Michelle, could I ask you, if not tonight, uh, could you email those um, motions through to the staff so we can get them identical? Perfect. Thank you very much, Ms. No, thank you. I'll ask if there are any other motions come from the floor. I'll take the lady over here standing first. If you come to the microphone, state your name and your suburban residence. Thank you. I'm Kelly Payne from Stratton. I'd like to ask the council to move a motion that we get more duck signage, please. Simple. Just be aware of ducks. We had a lot of uh, ducklings killed last year. Uh, can you give me a street list? Uh, Farrell Road. Farrell Road, where the new motorbile estate's gone in, where the train tracks are. They actually sit along there quite a bit and up near Caltex. It's all about the old production of Caltex was. Thank you. Um, I'll call for a seconder. Second that. Please, Cameron. And I'll ask if there's anyone against. Being no one against, let's we'll clear that carry. Uh, I did see another hand go up. New hearing first. from the Bridge Rat Perth Association. The council uh, included in the draft heritage local planning policy access to heritage advice as a means of incentivisation. Do you want to a reason? I'll let's get a second to first and see if there's anyone against. We'll have a seconder. Claire Scanlon. Is there anyone against? We know and against, but clear that carry. But once again, Lynn, can you, if not tonight, can you provide a, a copy to our uh, minute clerk? Thank you. It's very hard writing down as fast as people speak. Um, any other motions off the floor? I'll ask if there's anyone who hasn't done a motion yet. Jill in the first row. If you can uh, come across, state your name and suburb of residence and Put your motion, thank you. My name is Philip Pippermans from the Fines. I just realised how easy it is that the lady in front would like to put in a motion for the kangaroo signs in the Fines. I know we've had temporary ones, but we have lost the permanent ones. Um, Jill, everyone, last year's Pippermans, I've lost that uh, last part of the I'd like permanent. Uh, oh, permanent. Yeah. Crossing is for the kangaroos because it's a big problem on heritage drive is one of them. Thank you. I'll ask if it's a seconder. Uh, the gentleman in the black and orange, if you just state your name. Tristan Tristan. Thank you, Tristan. And I'll ask if there's anyone against. Being known against, I declare that carried on the board. Claire, do you have another motion? Thank you. And Fran, you're going to ask a question one time, I'll wait to the end. Thank you, Mr. Dan. Um, this motion has come about um, in my mind this evening from the apparent disconnect between the community of the Guildford area and the community of the Ellenbrook area in um, many aspects of local government. So I would like to move that council consider separating the Midland Guildford and Swan Valley Kitchen wards from the other wards in the city of Swan. And I'll just, so I just want to make sure, have you got this written down? Um, yes, and I shall can email it through, if that's helpful. That would be helpful. So I'll just ask you to read it out again so I can comprehend it, but also in the of the other tonight or the audience. Okay, of course. That council consider separating the Midland Guildford 
and Swan Valley Kijikanga wards from the rest of the city of Swan. Okay, um, I'll ask if there's a seconder to the motion. Patrick Irwin. And I'll, can I just clarify, so you're asking the city to consider the, Midland, the current Midland Guildford Board and the Swan Valley Gidjigana Board be no longer part of the city of Swan? I would like this council to consider that they either create a, a new local government area, perhaps with the newer areas, or for council to consider a separation. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure of the uh, legal aspects behind that, but uh, council can certainly consider it and be answered. So I'll, Patrick Irwin is the seconder. I'll now uh, ask if there's anyone against. You wish to debate it? Okay, we'll put it to the vote. Uh, those in favour of the motion, please raise your green cards. Okay, those against, can please raise your red cards. Uh, the motion is lost, nine votes for and 43 against. Uh, thank you, Fran Irwin. Uh, can I ask how many motions you have? Thank you. Thank you. Shouldn't take long. Um, I move that the City of Swan rehabilitate the current senior citizens building on the avenue in Midland and it be repurposed as an intergenerational community centre for Midland. Uh, thank you. I'll ask if there's a seconder. Patrick Irwin. Is there anyone against? I wish to debate it. You have three minutes for your opening remarks. Thank you, uh, friend. Thanks very much. Um, if you've ever had the misfortune to, to pop into that area, into that building, you would be, I can't because it's very hard to get access, but um, it's in a very dilapidated situation. The senior citizens of Midland do not have a decent building where they can come and meet. Um, the whole arrangement around the, that building is, is um, uncertain and uh, hasn't had any repairs done. And um, the point is that that building is, is important to be maintained because you could rehabilitate it easily, it could be renovated. Um, but at the same time, many senior citizens, and I've been happy to be spoken to by many, and I've seen them sign the petition which was presented to Council during 2022 with several hundred signatures, where people ask for an intergenerational community centre in Midland and, and to use the city of, and to use that building. Uh, because at the moment there is no place for people in the Midlands to go and meet whether you are a toddler, a mum of a toddler, uh, somebody of an age, uh, or somebody who is a senior citizen. There's nowhere to go and hold those communities. And we just heard about this lovely prop one house one, which is new, newly purposed. Well, we've got a building we can already use. So if we believe in recycling, then we should recycle a building that's there and ready to be used. Point is, we just do not have one at all in Midland. There is no intergenerational community centre. If you try and book a room, hmm, there's no way to book a room in England apart from one or two places. And they're very hard to get into. So that's why we need it. Thank you, as a seconder, Mr. Irwin. You wish to speak or not? Then make your way to the microphone. Thank you. You have three minutes. I've been fortunate enough in the past to attend a meeting with senior citizens. It was very interesting. It was a talk on archaeology. It's an old 1970s brick building. 
with the terracotta tile roof, it adjoins Midland Oval, and it actually is, uh, it was built with money raised by the public. It was built with public money um, by the senior citizens at the time, and it's effectively a community centre which is no longer accessible, as Fran said. And it's a great shame because uh, a regional urban centre doesn't have a regional urban centre to attend. Um, you know, you can go to a pub, or you can go to a church hall, or use the, um, the courthouse, ironically, for public meetings. Most of us go to the pub, I think. Um, uh, so why on earth can't we fix up this useful old building, make it accessible, make it accessible to all age groups, as Fran says, and uh, use the assets we have instead of um, basically locking them down. I believe it's been purchased now by the city. It's now in city hands. Um, why can't we, as Fran said, why can't it be uh, rectified if it's got you know, need some flashing work done to the roof, let's do it. Make it spruced up and give us back our asset and make it more accessible. What's, um, it just makes total sense. Thank you. Thank you. Let's leave the information. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. What we need to be reminded of here ladies and gentlemen, is that prior to the city purchasing that building, the building was owned by the senior cities. The city used public money to purchase that building from them for a specific reason. And we are obliged to continue developing that space for the intent that we use public money. Now, the senior cities were given several million dollars 3.7 million, if memory serves me correctly, for them to relocate into a purpose-built building. To date, if you ask the question, what have they done to relocate, the answer would probably be nothing. So bear in mind, the City of Swan gave the senior sets several million, 3.7, someone can correct me from the officers if they wish, to purchase that building so that they could relocate into a new purpose-built building. They've done nothing. So had they pursued that, then that building would be available as a community building. So remember that we, the city spent public money to purchase a building for a specific purpose. And we're obliged to continue with that purpose. Thank you, speaker, for the motion. Neil Beer, you wish to speak? I'm speaking for the motion. I speak for the motion because I think it should go to council and the council should discuss this transaction of a lot of money to another community group. Right? It should be open. It should be open for council discussion so we can all hear and understand if money has been exchanged and there's been no action, right? And if money has been exchanged and the building is still available, then it could be used to actually renovate, repair, whatever that is. So it should go to council because I want to know what's missing. Why wasn't it followed up? Why did we give money that happened? And also, we have a building there. But now it could be repurposed with that money sitting to a function that brings it into the situation which we free. We keep looking back at 1980s. This movement is being held back because we have 19, 1980s thinking. We need to step into the 2023. So each generation has been told to be fantastic. Let's send the council. These are our councillors. Tell us about this. Volunteer discuss. Uh, speaker against the motion, Mr. Pittman's. Thank you. It's not part of. Not, thank you. 
So I'm not taking questions. You can speak against the motion, or for the motion, but I'm not taking questions at this point on the motion. My name is Philip Pippermans from the Vines, the kangaroo science. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to understand. I've spent money on this building. You won't need to spend money again. That's what I'm, you have to make a copy. Um, you, you, you're saying you want us to fix this building. So you want us to do something with this building. The council has done something with this building. They bought it. They have plans. Oh, yeah. I don't understand why we have to now ask the council to do another investigation on restoring the building that they bought. Doesn't make sense. Questions? It's a fair question, isn't it? Uh, the point is. Uh, I'm sorry. Statement. Sorry. Statement. Are we, are we ready? Is it I'll ask. Time? Sorry. I'll ask if there's any other speakers for or against the motion. Then uh, you have uh, three minutes to sum up. Good to go. I can understand you. I can understand why you're saying that. Yeah. I, it's just very interesting that a member of the public with no position of authority or discretion or ability to explain to us about City of Swan um, policies and procedures and purchases has just come up and told us that City of Swan bought it and it's City of Swan's choice. They spent, what did you say, 3.7 million and uh, they, re they spent that money and they purchased it for a specific purpose. Well, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Uh, it's a bit like the nine years policy, a bit like the nine years, or we're not allowed to know what happened to the finances on the Oval for nine years, and we're not allowed to know what this 3.7 million was purchased for. Nobody's been told. This is, this is a very, very strange. We should not be happy with a council that has spent 3.7 million on buying a building, but nothing has happened. The current building is dilapidated, it's dangerous. People go there, tell me it's dangerous. And there is no way for the city citizens or to go, all right, that's maybe they haven't taken action. But we're in a vacuum here. We don't have a community centre for Midland. So let's not get sidetracked here with somebody telling us something which is not on public record, so this person cannot speak to us and tell us. Mr. Bailey is not in a position to tell us what City Swan Council policy is. It is our situation to ask the question and to make the request, the motion, that that building is used, is repurposed as a community intergenerational center. Now, it's up to these good people to tell us why not, and to tell us we've got a secret deal, well, tell us a secret deal, we can't touch it. Ooh, okay, thank you, thank you for telling us. And it's up to these good people over here to come up with a good design. It's, it's not complicated. Right? The point is you get the motion up here, and then the council can have a look at it and sort it out and debate it. If we don't get it up, Nobody's asked for an intergenerational community centre again that's got through. It's, it was tried all last year. It was up in council last year for those of you who don't attend the council meetings. It was a strong petition from a lot of elderly people and people all across the city of Swan saying we want an intergenerational community centre in Midland. I think you've got them in other council, in other reports. We just don't have it in Midland. Not an unfair request. So I'm asking for you to consider let's get it up to council and let's let the council take it from there. Thank you. I'm now going to put the motion. Those in favour, please raise your green cards. Uh, those against, please raise your green cards. Uh, the motion is lost, 14 votes for and 27 against. You have one last item, is that it? I'll, I've got one hand being raised. We've got a motion to. This will be the last one, thank you. You can come down to the podium, down to the microphone. Will you please state your name and suburb of residence and read your motion out, thank you. Microphone, thanks, Matt. Matt Fisher from Ailey. 
Uh, promotion is the over two for campers. Uh, one of them is the traffic lights at the intersection of Millhouse Road and Egan Drive. There's no actual green arrow to go through that set of traffic lights. There's only an intermediate green or red to go through there. So with schooling, two schools in the area, plus a high school in the area, traffic trying to get through there in those peak periods, cars are trying to go halfway through the intersection without actually getting a green arrow through the area. So there's a lot of new misses every morning and every afternoon going through those intersections. Yeah, thank you all for that through the investigation. We'll have to make a submission to the main road. Uh, you're satisfied with a lot of information there, Mr. Code? I'm fine, just go ahead here. Yeah. Um, before we go any further, I'll call for a seconder for the motion. Sarah Newitt. Thank you, Sarah Newitt. And I'll ask, is there anyone against? Being no one against, I declare that carried. And thank you for the presenting time. One more motion for the carry, please. And the next one is the roundabout on Millhouse Road and Hemingwell Cap. There is a turn left at the edge of the traffic that banks back between the two roundabouts, and the people who still go straight through on the left hour turning left, and the people go straight through the intersection. Thank you. Can I get a second? Same, zero. Yeah, yeah. I'll ask if there's anyone against an investigation of, um, into that intersection. Being no one against, I declare that carried. And it comes to the time of the evening where I'd like to thank everyone for coming along, participating in your annual um, meeting of electors. For all the... Thank you. Okay, I'll close the meeting at uh, 9.21.